it's Pat Hood from Passions and Pastimes, and I'm back with part two of this jewelry jar. Um, some great uh, natural stone, some great pieces for repurposing in the first half, uh, first part of the jar, I'd say first third of the jar. I'm just pulling things out now so that we can um, get started on the next third, and there's quite a variety. I hope there aren't too many tangles. Um, let's see. Now, in the first part of the jar, I found a, um, a tassel, a pendant kind of thing. Um, and I'm hoping that I'll find what it connects to. I couldn't really figure that out. Whoops, I got lots of stuff here. So, here's our first statement piece, I would say. A lovely two-strand, lightweight, um lightweight hollow metal and plastic beads with the chains uh no maker's mark that i can see but a very wearable kind of a little bit eclectic necklace so you could wear this to the office no problem but you could put it on a little black dress and and spice things up standing there with your cosmopolitans or your margarita um yeah i uh I like the look of that. I think it's well done and uh, very wearable. Certainly um, something I can donate or uh, uh, give to someone who would wear it who in the family who might, uh, who might wear that. Very nice. Off to a good start. Um, here is a bracelet. It's interesting. This is a, it's not really a clamper bracelet, but I guess so that it would fit different sizes. It's got a hinge here. Very nice looking bracelet. Isn't that nice? Gold and black always, you know, go nicely together. I have a, you know, regular seven inch wrist, so, um, but if you had a slightly smaller wrist, I think this might close up enough that you could wear it and slightly larger, you could wear it as well. Very pretty. I don't know if I want to give that away. That's what I'm going to have to think about. Oh, here's a... Oh, this is a cutie. Look at this. What has it got? It's got a barrel. Is that a barrel clasp? It's pretty. Oh, that is the most verdigreed or uh, uh, oxidized brass barrel clasp I've seen. I don't know if I would. I have to get the cl clippers, the... the the pliers to get it open probably not worth it but it's got the cutest little plastic beads look at these little flower beads and leaves oh these are so cute i i would take this apart in a second and uh let my granddaughter make something out of those she would just be thrilled those are so pretty and uh i don't know if it's been in salt water or what caused it to do that but um Maybe somebody loved it a lot and wore it a lot, but it certainly doesn't look, uh, you know, scratched up and so on from being worn. So there's quite a few, you know, flower beads. One, two, three, four, five in each little cluster. Um, and, and five there, and then, goodness, five, ten, fifteen more down there. So that's a good uh, set of little plastic beads. Very nice. And then this, this is plastic. It's a nice little stretchy bracelet um you know made to look like some kind of stone but plastic so i'll put it in more with my kids bead stuff with that um i see something with shell and faux pearl because pearls this size would be unaffordable so there's the faux pearl some nice uh, faceted beads some nice dyed shell and everything's all coordinated let's see it's nice and long I don't see a clasp yet so this is law obviously long enough to wrap twice around the neck there okay so I'm gonna oh boy to get it on camera so one two 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight strands times nine. Eight times nine is 72 inches. Um, yeah, for sure. So that's a long one. You could make it into three strand, no problem. You could uh, make it into, you know, that's great. Beautiful piece. I have to find somebody who would appreciate that. I'd hate, I, I'd hate to take it apart. I mean, you could take it apart and make it smaller and, or, you know, use the, the individual beads, but it's done so nicely and the color, colors are coordinated so well. I mean, these are just plastic. These are, these are shell plastic, plastic, or yeah, those are plastic. Anyway, well, another one to maybe give away. Um, I got a bunch of uh, earrings I'm going to put off to the side here till I see if I find their mates. I got a, a ring that's got itself stuck on a necklace. There we go. Okay. So here's one of these um, uh, sort of tourist necklaces from Egypt. Uh, I'd have to look up what the hieroglyphs on the back stand for been a long time since I studied that um, but you know rough carved stone usually it's alabaster and then it's got dye put on it so um, I won't repurpose that in any way if somebody's doing a project about Egypt they could do something with that um, there's the one ring that was tangled up in things it's one of those um, meant to be a stacker I don't know if you go which way it goes I guess it this way so that it can go down whoops excuse me for well that's interesting actually it's quite comfortable I'm surprised I don't wear a lot of rings um because I lose the precious stones out of them I tend to be hard on my metals but when I do wear them I wear them and then put them away, clean them up, put them away. So that's that's cute. Um, there's this one. I think it's just glass. It's adjustable. It's had a a rough life. It needs to be curved, recurved to fit um, properly. But that would be a nice looking ring to wear. Like that. Any more rings in here? bits and pieces oh here's something cute look at this isn't this cute it's a bee not identifiable as viable by me anyway as any specific type of bee but it's a little bee pin no marking on the back let's see will it go in there maybe it's a little bent out of shape that can be repaired that's cute I really like that. Here's, oh, whoa. Okay. Here's, I'm trying to figure out if it was a necklace, but it's a bracelet. And it's, that's interesting. Look at it. It's multiple chains. So gold tone and silver tone chains. And they're joined together with rings and joined at, at the, with these end bars. And then it's got a, a star scallop shell that's attached right across the top other sea star and all these other lovely little danglies well that's very fun and wearable and very lightweight so uh, you know you're in a beachy mood or you just want to pretend that you're gonna go on a vacation you could wear that lighten your mood I see the real spring and summery piece what else have we got here? I'm finding pieces I don't know what to do with, but I'll hopefully that'll work out. Oh, before I get to that, there's a snowman with a, I guess with a songbook singing, or he's reading out loud. No markings, so I'll put that away with the uh, Christmas jewelry. Now, this is a statement piece. This is a, a bib necklace for sure. 
Um, oh, it's got a pearl stuck in it from somebody else, some, somewhere else. Um, how do you tell what is the front and what is the back? Okay, I was looking at the back. And I see that there is a tag, and this is Charming Charlie. Hi, Charlie. How you doing? Um, so it's in the back here, there's this net of large rings. And on the front, there are these plastic sort of a champagne-y, yellowy tone. Um, I think they're all there. Well, that looks very nice. It's quite a hefty chain. They're, they're, it's weighty. This is, you would wear this just for an evening, an hour or two, and then you'd be going, oh, my aching and shoulders. So it could be why somebody donated it. But it's an excellent shape. It looks like all the parts are there. I guess I could go through more carefully. Okay, so the first row is all there. This looks like the second row. Yeah, it looks like they're all there. Odd numbers all the way down the bib. So, I'll have to find somebody who likes to party. You know, once things open up again, um, I'm sure that would be a fun necklace to wear for an evening. Um, here, I have some pieces I've, uh, I'm just putting to the side here, sort of bits of earrings and things. And here's, so let's see, here's a rhinestone necklace. This is newer lobster claw clasp. I like the way it's, uh, the ends are done. Um, very clean and look at all that sparkle. So there's a nice little prom necklace for somebody or, you know, wedding, that kind of thing. Save that. Now I have some big earrings. There's one pair that's showing up. They're hollow though, so they're not really heavy. Um, I don't think they're precious metal. Let's see what my magnet thinks of them. They're probably aluminum. Oh, well no, magnet sticks there. So there is some nickel in them. Oh yeah, sticks down there too. Okay, so there's a pair of earrings. Um, oh, here's another similar pair of earrings, just smaller, and again, attracted to the magnet. So these might have been, you know, they're so similar in design, they might have been, you know, a set. You get one, two, or three pair um, that are similar in size. These are interesting. There's another pair. Look at the nice sparkly rhinestones. And these are ear climbers. So you probably haven't seen these recently. This is so this goes in the hole and the, the, the lobe of the ear, and this clips around the outside of the ear. If you wanted to make like you had elf ears, this would be a good place to start. Aren't those pretty? And it's a pair. I've never seen a, a pair in a jewelry jar before. So I don't know. I don't know how comfortable those would be to wear. I can't imagine they'd be uncomfortable. And this part looks like you could adjust it a bit. So very, very pretty. I like those. So that's three pair of earrings, and I got some bits and pieces. Oh, here's another ring. Just uh, oh, it's got some rhinestones. Three little rhinestones, and it's got a real rough spot right there that I would wanna. Um, file off but uh, what size would it be well it's a pinky ring for me it's a little well maybe a little bigger than a pinky ring oh so maybe a seven and a half wow um, cool interesting okay so that's three rings hey we're moving through this um, second half of the jar a lot more quickly than the first part of the jar so maybe we'll finish it a lot of earrings coming out um and so i'll be trying to match those up there's one of those dreaded magnetic necklaces that everything in the jar sticks to so oh 
Let me just quickly, there we go. Okay, so we'll get this guy out of the way. It's, they're nice beads. They're always nice beads. These are um, made in such a way you can wear them as a lariat. You can, they, they're because of the magnetic beads, you can line them up, wrap them around your wrist and turn it into a, a wide bracelet. So I find that kind of awkward to do when you're, especially when you're trying to do it on camera and then it doesn't go the way you expect it to. Anyway, so you can do that with it somehow on a good day um, as a necklace. Oh, saw a near part of an earring stuck to it. Uh, let's look at the beads up a little up close. Yeah, it might be worth taking these apart and repurposing. There's some nice uh, finishes on those uh, these if they're glass, and then these that would be magnetized hematite probably, or just uh, made to look like hematite. Um, that's not a bad looking one. It's a little more classy than some of the ones I've seen, but I tend to not keep those um, magnetic beads. Just tend to spread their magnets to other things, but I'll put it away for now, away from the rest, and see what we can find in here. I feel I'm, I'm gonna. I, I see similar colors. Okay, so here's a pair of pierced earrings, red. These would be good for stool tops in a dollhouse. Um, what else do I see? Uh, here's a pair of metal lightweight earrings and sort of a peachy color. And uh, there's a pair. I have to check what's on the end, what kind of uh, stops are on them in a minute. Um, there are lots and lots of single earrings. Oh, here's another ring. Pretty glass, purpley glass. Just a faux. I don't see any maker's mark on the back. But uh, again, nice looking ring. I'd even wear that. Um, what else do I see? Oh, here's another ring, adjustable ring, just a, you know, a faux wedding band. And here is a pin. And it is a pin that is marked Sarah Coventry. Oh, score. Sorry. Bonus. I collect Sarah Coventry. I didn't recognize this as a Sarah Coventry pin. The clasp. There we go. Oh, look. How nice. I will have to go look that one up. Yay. Well, this jar is just delivering interesting, interesting pieces after pieces. It's not marked Canada, so it's uh, probably I should be able to locate it in the uh, Sarah Coventry books. Here is a bracelet. This is pretty. I like the, it, I think it's two tone. It's hard to tell under this light. Maybe it's not. Let's find the clasp. The clasp looks worn. At least some of the copper's coming through. We open it up. It's not too bad. Oh, it's some, one of those magnet bracelets. If you, these are the little magnets, so if you are helped by those, then uh, if it helps with your arthritis or whatever. Um, there's a nice uh, little magnet bracelet. Very, very stylish. You could wear it out all the time and can't get it to go back. There we go. There we go. So, a bracelet. Second bracelet from this half of the jar. Um, here's a little angel pin. There we go. A little praying angel. I don't know if I can get it to focus any better or not. Not really. Um, sort of wants to go now. Sorry about that, people. There. 
So I'll put that off with the little B pin. The B pin I think is more attractive. Here's another pin. This is a house pin. It looks like the um, the Houses by Lucinda series, but it's not marked on the back. So why is this not focusing? Mm. Okay, but it's not marked. Usually the Houses by Lucinda are marked. People and people tend to collect them. Here's another pin. And I gotta figure out why my thing is not focusing. Come on, camera. Um, I can't seem to. I'm gonna stop for. Okay, there we go. Now, now it wants to focus. I don't. I think that's just metal. It's not. It's not. Those aren't not rhinestones around there. But that's quite a lovely uh, design for a pin. And uh, not marked in any way on the back. That's quite pretty. Three pins. And still sorting through little bits and pieces here. Okay, here's, oh, this is a necklace. Thought maybe it was earrings. Um, just a, sort of a coppery colored chain of a nice length comes down to these acrylic or plastic um, dangles in a sort of a minty green pink and clear and then the gold sort of leaves and a to go with them so that's quite nice nice little uh, nice little chain nice little uh, necklace very lightweight probably I'll donate that whoops excuse me probably donate that away um, I think I have another one or two necklaces here that are just a little tangled. Oh, three. Okay, so first, this one. Well, this is unusual in that it's these bars with these little dangles. So it's got stations of plastic and wooden beads. There's a leaf, some other things. There's a nice, I think that's glass, little heart, bird. Well, this is quite cool. Little plastic flowers and hearts and all kinds of things spread around the necklace. And I don't, oh, there is a clasp. So there is a clasp. So the necklace is about 36 inches. And uh, I don't know if you'd call that boho, but it kind of reminds me of, of that style. Um, in excellent shape, just needs a wash, and then uh, someone could really enjoy this. A very nice, casual, you know, everyday wear it with jeans. It, some people don't like these asymmetrical designs. But I think it works fine here with this particular uh, necklace. I think I've had one of these earrings before. I think if I go into my repurposed parts, I'm going to find the match for this. And I've already, I think I've already tried to re, uh, to or set it aside to be repurposed. That's very interesting. Um, so I got, let's see what, if, I haven't got that much left, so let's dump out the jar, and I think I'm going to just go to the whole pieces, and then I'm going to do a second um, a little wrap-up video with all the necklaces since there seem to be, or it's not necklaces, excuse me, a wrap up with all of the earrings, okay? So here we have, oh, it's a necklace, cool. Very lightweight, aluminum, this is glass. These are glass and otherwise very lightweight chain, clear, that's a, um, 
pretty little design. And uh, very nice. Very modern idea. Here's a hematite necklace with the bear design. Uh, and uh, very wearable. And a lobster claw, not a lobster claw, sorry, a barrel clasp that works very well. So there's another nice, very nice necklace. Here's a little dark chain. It's got a spring ring clasp. No, and it's broken. So there's probably can be repaired. I don't know if I can get those back together. Oh, chains always come in handy in repurposing. Whoa, this is pretty. Look at this. Oh, I like this. This looks well, possibly handmade. But look at those gorgeous sparkly beads. Look at that. It's a beaded bead and then there's this one. How nice that is. And there's two of these. There's another one of those beaded beads and then this sparkly one. Very pretty design. Very nice use of color. I like that. A little short. Eight, well, maybe not. 18 inches. Maybe slightly longer. Very pretty. Oh, nice necklace. A uh, not Pandora bracelet. Because <laughs> Pandoras are sterling and that's copper showing through. But it really looks like it might have been a Pandora. Um, I don't know if I can get it open. You know, it certainly has the same sort of design, but it doesn't say 925 inside there. Or if it does, I wouldn't believe it. Yeah. And these, they don't move. They're, they're in place. So, I'm not sure what to do with that. The clasp is pretty far gone. It would have to be totally recoded. This is a pretty little necklace. Very lightweight. Makes me think of Valentine's Day, which wasn't uh, too far past. These are sort of upside down hearts. They're really triangles, but you know. And these are all plastic beads uh, and a nice beaded bead. So very lightweight. Um, lobster claw clasp. No maker's mark, but again, very pretty. They're nice and sparkly. Um, oh, okay, that's interesting. Okay, so this is, I thought this was a shoelace. This, is, this feels like a shoelace. Sorry, people. It feels like a shoelace. Looks like a shoelace. It's got this little dangle on it with, well, that might be glass. Um, so, nothing really special. Nicely finished uh, extension chain there. And then one of these, these uh, European bracelets, as they often call them. Uh, lobster claw clasp. I don't see any markings on it. But some beautiful blue beads. So I think we'll end here. Some very interesting things in this in this part of the jar. And I'll come back with uh, all of the little bits and pieces of pairs of earrings. Hi, it's Pat Hood, and I'm back with the wrap-up to that five-pound jewelry jar. There were many, many uh, single and pairs of earrings in the bottom of the jar. And I also found a few other things that were not earrings. So first, um, this rose, I would say celluloid pin. Um, it's a pin made in Taiwan. Just a little, uh, I don't know. Um, 
you know how old it is but it's um, you know acrylic or plastic or celluloid some kind of um, plastic material it's quite pretty uh, quite pretty rose it doesn't look like there's anything broken either there's a little ribbon sort of piece here but I don't think there's meant to be one on the other side then there was this pin I don't know if you can read it let's see if I can get it to focus Woohoo little pin oh, doesn't want to focus so oh, I hate when this happens there we go it looks like it says Schwaben Club so I'll look that up online it could be uh, you know a local German Canadian club for all I know and I don't know what it says behind the little clasp there nice little pin there was this necklace very lightweight plastic beads let's see if we can focus in on it there we go in that turquoise color and sort of pink and these are look sort of like shell but they're not they're metal discs I think no no sorry that one is shell and then I guess these might be pieces of shell as well so um, spring ring clasp and no markings that I can see there we go but again another nice little lightweight very summery looking necklace and then a chain lobster claw clasp empty chain I don't remember there being a pendant without a chain. Oh, there was that tassel, but I don't think that went with, I don't think that went. Anyway, tass, uh, chains are always good in for repurposing. And then there were um, many earrings. Now this pair of earrings, I think were made to go with this necklace that I was impressed with. So impressed with, they look like they're meant to go together. Just uh, lightweight plastic beads. And then there was another set of earrings. And I wonder if this set of earrings was meant to go with this necklace. Certainly the reds are the right color to put them together. So I'm going to claim that as a set. And then we had, I don't know where I put the necklace, but we had a necklace that had glass um, dangle or glass stations in it. And here's a pair of uh, earrings that will match that necklace. Um, there's this pair of hoops. Good wearable hoops in great condition. There we are. Uh, this pair of earrings. Quite nice enamel. Very wearable, very lightweight. This pair of uh, cloisonne style, I guess you would say. I can focus any better. Focus. There we go. Very pretty ones. And then a second pair. Um, these are very lightweight, but again, that style. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pairs of earrings. These, I don't know what they're made out of, but they feel lightweight like plastic. But there's another pair of, pair of pierced earrings. Six. These look like real pearls, but they're not marked sterling in any way on the, uh, but they do have that shape. Um, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. A little pair of, um, Silver balls, 10, a pair of larger silver balls, 11, a pair of uh, nice uh, Zychronia, 12, a little uh, Celtic trefoil, 13, these little tiny feathers, 14, and we don't stop there. These uh, sort of mother of pearl looking pierced earrings, 15. And then a pink version similar, but these don't feel like glass. 
So 16. This lovely pair of smaller pierced earrings in the minty green. 17. Mismatched back, so I'll have to fix that. Um, another pair of, these are metal with enamel. So uh, 18, are we 17 or 18? We're getting into more of the 80s ones. Uh, 19. 20. I thought I had one of these before, but to have the full pair here, so. Um, 21. This little uh, black set. Just feels like plastic. Needs some cleaning. 22. These lovely little Christmas wreaths. 23. These lovely lavender. 24. Lightweight aluminum. Two pair of these that are identical. Again, the, the lavender color, just plastic. So, uh, 25, 26. This pair of slightly heavier, but unmar unmarked um, enamel. This one's missing a section of the enamel I now see. Uh, 27. So those will definitely have to be repurposed or something. 28, again, another pair of lightweight aluminum. And this pair, these lovely pink designs. 29. And then, oh, and then these pearls. So, that's not bad. 30 pair of uh, earrings. 30 pair of earrings. Some of them I'll give away, some of them I'll repurpose. This, um was part of an interesting earring. There's only one. Whoops, it's got this weird broken pearly thing. So it's actually two pieces like that. So that'll go in the repurposed pile. It might make an interesting focal or something. Or turn it into two earrings. Just take it apart and each section could go in an earring. Uh, this earring that'll be nice to repurpose. I like the little bubblies in the, the glass uh, One of these to repurpose again no maker um, a blue aluminum one Not sure what we could do with that. It's got a little mark there And a pearl single uh, flat button pearl this is kind of cool. This might make a nice little charm or focal. There's this two-piece earring. Nice door, uh, not really a door knocker, but uh, the two pieces can be repurposed together or separately. Um, a single pearl with something encrusted on it, but that might clean up. I don't know if it's worth redoing. Um, this is another nice pearl, uh, faux pearl one. And another nice faux pearl one. We have these two hoops, different sizes. I don't know what you can do with those. I've never found a way to repurpose them. Um, there's this. It, you can see the back's been bent. It's the only thing wrong with it. Now it'll be really nice to repurpose. Don't mind my fridge. There's another pearly one. There's this lovely dangly one. And, oh, this pair showed up. I thought I only had one, and now I have a pair. So that's 31 pairs. These are, these are quite pretty. They're that uh, lovely stone, glass, crystal, whatever. Those are, oh, that's nice. I thought, that, I guess they were, I had two, and they all of a sudden they came together. So that's a really pretty pair. But I might repurpose them. They're nice. And then a single one of these. And then, well, every jewelry jar can't be without a button, right? That's jewelry. Um, uh, a Sacred Heart medal, just a, an inexpensive one, but uh, intact in good shape. This is a Department of Highways token. So I don't know if this is an old bus token. 
that's what I thought of it when I looked at it. Class one vehicle. Department of Highways Ontario. And then same thing, Department of Highways Ontario DHO. So I'll have to look that up. And then this is a coin. Um, and I'm, it's very lightweight aluminum. I think it's a coin. It might. I'll have to look it up online uh, with some wheat sheaves on it. Whoops, where'd that go? It's so lightweight, I lost it. So that's the end of the jewelry jar. Um, thrilled with all the jewelry that matches um, uh, my Sarah Coventry pin. I'm just thrilled that I got a Sarah Coventry pin. And uh, so many other lovely things that I can both repurpose um, and also donate. So thanks for joining me for this little wrap-up.